title of this session is Cooperative and Community Enterprises, New Old Ideas. Obviously, one of our key priorities is to increase the provision of affordable housing across Wales. And we're keen to explore the variety of options around that, and that includes the cooperative model. Cooperatives provide over 100 million jobs worldwide. Again, equal to, if not larger, than the largest global uh, capitalist global corporations. And I should add that at 900 million members, we're bigger than Facebook. We have more users than Facebook. In Europe, cooperatives are a significant part of the European economy. 160,000 cooperative enterprises, 123 million members, 5.4 million jobs, with a turnover of over 300 billion euros a year. Highly significant. Cooperative enterprise is not just an old idea. It's not a new one either. It's actually a sound basis, a relevant idea, a sound basis for building business enterprises that benefit the many rather than the few. And what a different housing market we have in this country to many other of our uh, similar Western European partner uh, countries. Um, we very clearly over the last 20 years have pushed more and more and more people into home ownership. Uh, home ownership that for very many of them uh, was unaffordable. Um, whilst at the same time residualising another part of the population uh, within social housing. The first of those is Switzerland and its cooperative bond financing model. Um, in 1991, the three umbrella non-profit cooperative housing associations in Switzerland came together to establish a joint bond issuing cooperative in collaboration with the Federation Housing Office, which is essentially the, the government housing office within Switzerland. By 2007, there were 350 housing cooperatives that had become uh, member organisations of this bond issuing cooperative. 238 of them have participated in bond issues in 2007 alone. And since the establishment of this model, over 30,000 non-profit new homes have been financed through this particular model. To finish up then, new generation of funding. How are we going to develop cooperative and mutual schemes over the next 10, 20 years? Well, as I've already said, uh, moving away from bank uh, bank debt to bond financing, finding ways to draw institutional investors into housing through variable term bond issues or equity capital schemes, the work that CDS have done on mutual home ownership David referred to earlier, uh, the European Investment Bank, uh, I see this as a, a potential partner organisation, they have five key uh, uh, strategic areas, one of which relates directly to uh, the forms of housing scheme that we're, we're talking about in the cooperative and mutual sector and indeed the European Investment Bank have already lent very large significant sums uh, in England and Scotland and I understand it Wales also. Um, big Society Capital, uh, this is the uh, rebranding of the previous government's idea for dormant bank accounts. Um, those dormant bank accounts will be used for, for uh, well, put to work, shall we say, for community-based um, uh, and uh, uh, vo voluntary organisations. Uh, the incoming UK government has looked at this and said that's a good idea, we'll call that. Well, originally they were going to call it the Big Society Bank, but they've renamed it over the last few days as Big Society Capital. Is there mileage on a, on a, on a national level, particularly in a, in a country like Wales, to have a single national uh, bond issue? Uh, that draws together the individual scheme financing requirements uh, through some sort of central warehousing facility. There's a, a, an organisation called the, Ho the Housing Finance uh, Corporation that has been doing this sort of uh, bond issue for a good number of years for smaller organisations anyway. And also is there mileage to establishing some new form of, of, of financial institution, some form of cooperative housing bank uh, to enable uh, cooperative and mutual schemes to develop moving forward. Shane Perkins, Midwell's Housing Association. Picking up on some of the themes, do you think there's a job to be done in terms of selling cooperative housing to the general public, given our obsession with 
outright owner occupation? There, there is a need uh, for information and education, continuous education of members, the general public uh, and employees within cooperatives so that the, the nature of a cooperative uh, uh, is understood. So welcome to the next session of this conference. Uh, this session is close to my heart. It's called Regulation, How Was It For You? Part 1. I know from painful experience in the past that the relationship between regulator and regulated can be a very uncomfortable one. It's not the most comfortable experience in the world being regulated. Um, but what I think needs to happen, and I think what everybody is now trying to do, is to learn to work together regulator with regulated and vice versa to work together with and to build mutual respect through that working relationship. Tenors Advisory Panel has stressed to my board that the single regulatory regime to include local authorities is high on their agenda. And the one thing I have insisted on the agenda, we consider formally as a board the reports from that tenants advisory panel because I want to hear what issues are concerning them and what they are saying. They are concerned about fuel poverty. They are concerned concerning the supply and demand of new homes. And also, they are warning me continually, please, can we monitor the impact of welfare reforms? But uh, I propose to issue a communication during April to all housing associations in the sector as to exactly how we propose to carry out risk-based and proportionate regulation because I feel still that there is lack of understanding at how this will happen. But also I feel that there is maybe different expectations as to what this means in practice. So we need to make sure that uh, we are singing from the same hymn sheet uh, in respect of what we can actually deliver on the ground with the resource that we've got. So what is working together mean? It means about focusing on outcomes. It means about having risk-based and proportionate approach. Whilst we are doing that, from a regulation perspective, I feel it's important that you also take that approach within your organizations, demonstrating to yourself that we are listening to feedback that we're receiving from yourselves, and we're trying to change the way we work uh, and, and regulate the associations. I think the most important message for me is that um, actually it's quite a good news message for housing at the moment. I think we're quite upbeat considering some of the backdrop. I think that I think at the moment that's how that's what I've got from today so far. I think it's good to see people working together, sort of um, putting resources together and expertise and sort of thinking we're all, we're all going for the common goal. So it is nice to see so many people working together more than they have done before. I've really enjoyed the level of debate. The economic sessions have been really interesting, um, so on two levels, because one is getting to grips with actually the Welsh um, situation in terms of devolution and some of the challenges just as a, as a nation, um, and funnily enough comparing that to the north east of England where I'm from and actually saying, do you know what, there is a bit of an argument there for people to go it alone if they can.